Today we are going to talk about this. It is without doubt the most beautiful aircraft ever to evolve from the mind of man. The Concorde retired in 2003. Ever since then, we've been stuck traveling at regular old speeds. But there is a company in Colorado called Boom. They've raised more than $150 million to build the first privately funded commercial supersonic plane. The company was started by a man named Blake Scholl. He came from the internet and software world, but decided he was gonna be the guy who would make this machine possible. And, and so they've been at it for a few years. Overture is the goal. And before that, they are building a plane that's about a third the size of this thing, which is called XB-1. And Boom is unveiling it for the first time and we get the first look at it. So let's head to Colorado and hear from Blake about Boom's progress. And with that, off we go to Colorado. So I've been following you guys since what? Since like 2015, 2016? I think it was early 2016, yeah. Give me, give me the whole thesis behind Boom and what you guys are trying to do. It's been uh, really half a century since we've had a speed up in air travel. We went from props to jets in the late 1950s and in the uh, 1960s and 1970s, we made the leap to supersonic with Concorde, but we never made high speed travel mainstream. And in fact, when Concorde shut down about 20 years ago, there was really no plan to pick up where it left off. And so that's what we're doing at Boom. We're building uh, high-speed travel that can be available to more people than ever before. So think New York to London in three and a half hours instead of six and a half. Think the West Coast to uh, Tokyo in as little as four and a half hours. Think of Overture, which is our airliner, as uh, chopping off the front cabin of a Boeing or Airbus wide body and making it go really fast. So it's got between 65 and 85 seats and we'll get you there you know, wheels up to wheels down in about half the time it takes today. If you fly XB-1 next year, this that would be the first private supersonic plane, is, is that right? That's, that's right. When we fly XB-1 next year, it'll be the first independently developed supersonic jet ever. Okay. Tell me just a little bit about your background, and in retrospect, do you think that's been a service to what you guys are trying to do? I went to school for computer science. I started my career at Amazon doing uh, automation of online marketing as a software engineer and then as a leader. Uh, but I've loved airplanes since I was a kid. You fly, right? And I've been flying for fun since college. You know, I'm, I'm one of those people that you, know, you let me behind the controls of an airplane and you, know, you got to wrest them out of my hands because it's so <laughs> it's so much fun. And it's such a uh, it, it's just a wonderfully human thing to do and technical and physical at the same time. Uh, but I, I've been watching the supersonic space since I was in my mid-20s. And I sort of gave myself a life goal of going Mach 2. And uh, one day I wanted to have my passion for aerospace uh, intersect with what I was actually working on and had no idea when that would happen or how it would happen. And, but I feel, I feel very lucky to be able to do boom. Why has it been since 2003 that um, nobody tried to, to do this again? We're now at the intersection of what is technologically possible and what there is a sufficient market demand for. So since Concorde retired in 03, there's been a two and a half fold increase in international travel. And that creates a lot more markets for supersonic. At the same time, we've had all kinds of new technology that didn't exist in Concorde's day. We've gone from aluminum to carbon fiber composites. We've gone from loud inefficient, environmentally unfriendly uh, turbojet engines uh, to turbofan engines that are much quieter, much more fuel efficient. And when you put together all the new technology, aerodynamics, materials, propulsion, you can now build an aircraft that's significantly more efficient than Concorde, which means it can be available to tens of millions of people at fares kind of like what you'd pay in business class today. So you guys are doing this in this super methodical way. You're unveiling right now this xb1 which is your your first plane and uh, tell me about it i mean it's basically a third of the size of where you're hoping to go with overture which will be your first commercial plane so xb1 is our think of it as our like baby prototype for overture we, we call it baby boom for fun okay. and it uh, it'll go supersonic uh it'll be history's first independently developed supersonic jet and you know, for those of you who are familiar with the, you know, the early days of SpaceX, it's in many ways analogous to the Falcon 1. Rather than going and building Overture, uh, we decided it was prudent to take all of our best ideas for that airplane 
and then go subscale and do design, build, fly, learn on a representative aircraft that is as human rated that you know, actually carries carries a living pilot. Uh, so we'll be flying XB1 and setting speed records in 2021, so next year. And then uh, as XB1 goes supersonic around the end of next year, we're going to pass kind of pass the torch from XB1 to Overture. And uh, and so all the things we've learned in flight test of XB1 uh, will inform the final design of Overture. We're going to press enter on that around the end of next year, uh, and then start signing up the rest of our supplier team for Overture. Uh, do the detailed design, and uh, in 2025, so about five years from now, we will be with Overture where we are with XB1 today, where we're rolling out the first assembled airplane, and then we'll be in flight test uh, starting in 2026 with Overture. So six years from now, you'll be able to look up and you'll see an Overture aircraft, you know, in the in the skies, uh, setting speed records, uh, and so we'll be carrying our first passengers by the end of the decade. Cool. Well, I think uh, I think. We can we can actually sort of like have a peek down on the factory floor, right? With XB1 kind of coming together. Yeah, let's go take a look at it. Here we are overlooking uh, XB1 and its assembly hangar. So this is a, a 67 foot long aircraft. Uh, so about one third of the scale of Overture, which would be a little bit more than 200 feet long. And uh, over here, we've got about a 21 foot, uh, 21 foot wingspan. So uh, this hangar that we're in here is perfect for XB1, but Overture wouldn't even fit in the building. So this, uh, we're gonna we're gonna move here in a couple years as we start building the first uh, Overture. Of the so the uh, the last few components are going on, and then uh, we're gonna lower the aircraft down onto a field, and then uh, we'll be ready to unveil the aircraft for rolling. How many how many people do you guys have working on the plane right now? We've got about 140 people in the company. Yeah, you know, of which about a hundred are working on XP1, uh, either either physically putting it together or finishing the design, and the engineering of it. You can see here we've got the the main landing gear. Uh, that's designed to take two hundred thousand pounds of load. Okay. We can provide even a relatively rough landing. And uh, up above it, this is the intake. So XP1 like uh, over to it's got three engines in it. So we've got one on uh, each side underneath the wing. And then we've got a third one in the tail with a, an intake that's mounted uh, uh, dorsal in the back of the airplane. So we've uh, we, we've built this deck so the airplane can be accessible uh, for installing systems, and uh, we call it the party deck. Building an airplane is like building an iceberg from the bottom up. Pilot sits here, but you can get a sense that uh, yeah, the visibility over this nose isn't going to be great, and that's why we've got the, um, the the camera system that allows the pilot to have a virtual window. It goes through the nose of the aircraft and they can see the runway better than they could on a typical subsonic airplane. You can see that we've got the uh, the nose cone is on now and we've got that, that silver thing uh, sticking out is the flight test boom. So that's uh, that's a piece of equipment that uh, measures, uh, measures airflow, airspeed, air pressure, uh, temperature well outside of the interference of the airplane itself. You kind of reach forward, you get a clean measurement. And then we use that to calibrate the sensors that are elsewhere in the world. There are uh, many, many, many sensors throughout this. And then the, the whole airplane has a real-time data link uh, down to the ground, about 10 megabit length. And so we've got real-time video feed, plus all of those sensors uh, fed real-time off the aircraft down to the control room. Uh, so we've got uh, carbon fiber composite wings. And uh, you know, you'll notice that the wings are relatively small compared to typical airline wings. So that's one of the artifacts of a high mock design is uh, you have relatively less wingspan. And that, um, uh, but you, you've got so much airflow over the wings, you can still get all the lift you need. And then the, the trick to making it uh, also work at low speed is you come in uh, at a very nose high attitude, you know, called a high angle of attack. And at that point, the whole aircraft is in something called vortex lift, where basically you get a vortex generated off the nose, you get a vortex generated off the uh, leading edge of the wing. And a vortex is basically, I think of it as like a little bit of air that's swirling. And so it's faster than typical air around it. And uh, you'll remember from you know, Bernoulli's principle that faster moving air has a pressure drop. And so that, that vortex you have sitting above the wing generates a low pressure region relative to the high pressure below the wing. And that's how that's how the airplane flies uh, subsonic. Well, it's amazing, man, and thank you know, thank you so much for your your time today, and and uh, and it's exciting to see you know how far you guys have come over these last few years. Well, thank you, Ashley. You've seen it from the very early days, 
and it, it certainly has come to the list. 